Good morning and welcome to the newspaper review right here on High Impact Television. I am Uyim Priye Krumale. As the 6th of April draws near, there is this palpable fear in the air, most especially in Nigeria, where the federal government has uh, uh, highlighted that that particular date will be the, the last day for those who have not registered for their national identification number and the linking with their SIM cards and that their phone numbers will be cut off from or cut off rather by the telecommunication service providers. However, a human rights activist and a lawyer, Mr. Mande Ubani, took the federal government. The attorney general uh, is one of the parties that he took to court the Nigerian Communications Commission and including the telco companies to court and secured a positive verdict of which uh, the law court has given two months for the extension of the NIN. Uh, but the other question that people are looking forward to is that if that particular verdict will hold sway, well, it's the court of law in the Federal Republic of Nigeria established by an act of the Nigerian uh, parliament. So it should hold sway. These are what we'll be looking at. There's allegation coming from Lagos by some people who have been to some of the 88 centers that is scheduled for vaccinating those who are uh, for COVID-19 vaccine, even though the, the federal governor said more than 300 people, 300,000 rather, people have been vaccinated. There's this allegation in Lagos State that some vaccinating centers are uh, selling the vaccines. Well, this is an allegation that has been debunked by the Commissioner of Information in Lagos State asking those who have proofs to come forward to lay their claims as this will be listened to by the government. These are some of the stories in the front banner of the polity. There's another argument that uh, the federal government or the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board JAM says that without the NIN, students won't be able to write that examination, that particular aspect uh, of the of the of the argument also with regards to NIN registration is also in contention by the courts and that this will deprive students from their rights to education and nothing of such policies should be established to inconvenience uh, Nigerians. These are some of the stories we will be taking a look at. But before we go into the newspaper review, punch newspaper. And the caption says, Lagos kicks nurses faults federal government as alleged vaccine sales surfaces. Still in the front page of the Punch newspaper, the Nigerian, the, the NBA, Lakers lose again without LeBron James, Clippers atop or stop Spurs. Assembly OK's Sunwoo lose 4.4 billion Naira vehicle purchase request. Joe Biden wants North Korea after missile launch. COVID-19, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control announces 149,882 recoveries March 25, which was yesterday. Tinubu to chair 11th Iowa House lecture. Bandits kill 20, 20 vigilantes and soldier in Niger State. Petrol price hike imminent as the NNPC declares 120 billion naira subsidy unsustainable. Please hunt a Lagos party organizer as man kills friend over lover. The Yoruba Council of Elders Knox group calling for Yoruba referendum on June 12th. Now Papa Gridlock. The Manufacturers Association of Nigeria fumes as gridlock threatens 2,000 export cargoes. FIFA to earn six or three billion pounds from Qatar 2022. Mega party eyes the hashtag NSAS movement to consult Jega and others. Now let's take a look at some of the stories there. Bandits killed 20 vigilantes and soldiers in Niger State. The bandits have ambushed and killed 20 vigilantes in Kotonkoro village of Mariga local government area of Niger State. A reliable source close to the community also said the bandits Wednesday night attacked a military base, killed one soldier and injured another. The attack is coming barely three weeks after a governor 
Abubakar Sani Bello visited the vigilante group and assured that the government would equip them with high caliber weapons to enable them to tackle the menace of banditry in the state. I believe the bandits got a wind of this story and quickly launched an attack against the vigilante group, which has suffered a uh, devastating uh, casualty there, about 16, if not 20 of the vigilante groups were murdered. Let's go to the next story. Tinubu to chair 11th Arewa House lecture. And now we go to the next story. Assembly of case, some will lose a 4.4 billion Naira vehicle purchase request. The Lagos State House of Assembly has approved 4.4 billion Naira for the procurement of vehicles for officials for official use by ministries, departments, and agencies. According to a statement on Thursday, the fund would be used to procure official vehicles for principal officers in the state public service. The Assembly has received three letters from the Commissioner in, for the Commissioner for Economics and Economic Planning and Budget, seeking approval of the House to grant the request of Governor Babajide Sonwolu to procure vehicles for official use by the various MDAs. The Chairman of the Committee met with Office of the Head of Service as well as the Ministry of Economic Planning and Budget in order to determine if the request qualifies for special expenditure. Uh, this particular story has received a lot of backlash from Nigerians, most especially from Lagosians, uh, budgeting or allocating such huge amount of money, 4.4 billion naira, to be used in purchase of vehicles for official use, uh, given the fact that they make comparisons with the recent 4.2 million pounds that uh, the United Kingdom is returning to Nigeria, which was a loot by a former governor of Delta State, which amounts to 2.2 billion naira when converted to Nigerian currency, which the Delta State government is uh, uh, some Communities in the Niger Delta, most especially in Delta State, is taking the federal government to court when uh, they made the proclamation that that money would be pumped into some federal government project that is, with, that is not within the vicinity of Delta State. Mr. Sonwulu has been, uh, a lot of people have been criticizing him, saying this is not the time, given the fact that Nigerians are calling for better infrastructure uh, to be put in place in school. Now let's go to the next story. Lagos kicks and nurses fault federal government as alleged vaccine sales surfaces. The story reads that the federal government on Thursday said it was satisfied with the turnout of Nigerians for COVID-19 vaccination as the number of vaccinated persons turns to 325,514. The executive director of the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, Dr. Faisal Shaibu, stated this in text message to journalists said the progress recorded was better than what the government had envisaged. Well, concerning the, like I said in the introduction when I was introducing the newspaper review, concerning the allegations that is posed against the legal state government, including the federal government, that there's been sales of vaccines, that some people will drive in to the vaccination centers with cars, and uh, they go, they have their way, they pay money. Well, those are allegations that have not been verified yet. Uh, just as the commissioner for information in legal state, Mr. Agbenga Motosha, is calling for those those who have evidence to that effect of bribery allegations uh, alleging the sales of vaccine to tender it before the public and uh, to the government agencies so they can act swiftly to stop that. The National Association of Nigerian Nurses and Midwives also called on their partners in regards to this story to make sure that they do not take part in such illicit and illegal acts as uh, the COVID-19 vaccines were not meant to be sold but to be given to Nigerians free of charge. Let's go to stories making the rounds and the front page of the Guardian newspaper. Court jails professor for three years for electoral fraud. Moving forward, Britain says Hong Kong has no right to dictate passport recognition. 
Ethiopia's Prime Minister says Eritrea to withdraw troops from Tigray. Lagos urges residents to take ownership of Penn Cinema flyover. Still in the front page of the Guardian newspaper, OAU Walker, that's uh, Obafemi Awolowo University Walker sent suicide text to family hangs self after work. Buhari renews appointment of the, B the Bureau of Public Enterprise boss. Ogun executed over 75 projects in six months, says the governor. Now let's take a look at the story. Court jails professor three years for electoral fraud. And now the Aquabum State I Court 2 sitting in Ikotakmene has found Professor Peter Ogban guilty of an electoral offense and consequently sentenced him to three years imprisonment. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in Aquabum State are taking Ogban to court on two count charges of tampering with the results of the Northwest Senatorial District in favor of the All Progressives Congress during the 2019 general elections in the state. Ogbao is a soil scientist and lectures at the University of Calabar acted as the coalition, the coalition rather, and returning officer during the National Assembly elections. He was prosecuted for manipulating and falsifying the election results in Oruk Anan and Etim Ekbo local government areas in favor of the incumbent ruling party. In his ruling, the president, the presiding judge, Justice Augustine Odoko, after reading the judgment for about two hours, sentenced Oban to 36 months of correctional service. The judge also ordered Oban to pay a fine of 100,000 naira for count two and one after accused of pleaded for leniency. To review on High Park Television, we've taken a look at the Punch newspaper. We're currently in the Guardian newspaper looking at stories making the rounds. But now we have a guest online reaching us from Lagos via phone call. It's a public affairs analyst, Balao Olojede. Good morning and welcome to the newspaper review. Good morning. How are you today? I'm very good. It's good to have you this Friday morning in the newspaper review. Now, Mr. I didn't, I didn't yeah, it's good to have you in the newspaper review. Well, thank you. Yes, thank you. yes, uh, Mr. Bolawa, we have we as a country, Nigeria, has received more than 3.9 okay 3.94 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine into the country. Now, and there are 88 centers in Lagos State. I wanted to know if you had made any effort to get yourself vaccinated. Uh, well, I, I do not qualify uh, to be vaccinated. I'm not on the priority list for this first batch. Uh, but it, it is for designated people, frontline health workers, uh, certain people of certain age category or, or certain level of comorbidity. Those are the ones that the current batch of vaccines are for. So I, I don't qualify. All right. If, if that's the case now, uh, there, is, there are new, uh, less information or allegations are surfacing in the front pages of newspaper where some um, persons in legal state are criticizing the agencies or the staff that have been charged with the responsibility of vaccinating persons of selling the vaccines or giving priority to some persons after being financially induced to that process. Did you foresee this? No, it, it, it's quite unfortunate, but it is also, um, it, it has become part of us. Uh, what, what, what we see playing out there is corruption. And corruption, unfortunately, it's not just at the level of the political leaders. It has dovetailed all the right... To the, to the down to to, to the, the grassroots, to the gate man, to the security guard, to every part of the entire system. So what you have had are situations in which people have been entrusted with this vaccine, and the people entrusted with it are doing all sort of deals with the, with, with the with the vaccine that we have. So it, it, it behoves on the on the government on on the authorities to ensure that this does not happen. So there must be a way in which, from time to time, they review where we are, what is going on in all those places, and be able to be accountable for these vaccines that has taken so long to come and has cost us an arm and a leg to be here. 
Okay, now, even though this information is just an allegation and it has not been verified yet, where the Commissioner for Information in Lagos State is saying that whoever has such information should come forward with a valid evidence that the government and the agencies can look at. But what ways do you think the government can uh, use to make sure that these vaccines are not sold to the public and they are given to people on the priority list as we move forward and proceed in the process of vaccinating Nigerians? How can we curtail this uh, trend that is surfacing about selling, selling the vaccine? Yes, they are going to have to leave the comforts of their offices and do what you call shop floor work, work on the shop floor, so that you can realize exactly what is going on at those shop floors. I'm not saying uh, the commissioner will start visiting all the how many places can he only visit, but there are there are other mechanisms, there are, there are tiers of leadership of the entire structure that we can deploy. We can even deploy uh, 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 ghost shoppers who go to some of these places, I think they want to uh, 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 collect vaccines and be able to record. You can record voices, you can record videos of what is going on in those places and make it available to them. For example, this morning I saw in the paper that the commissioner was saying that uh, we've been using the uh, registration platform. No, that is what he has been told, that the registration platform is functioning. It is not working. People are not adhering to it. People are just walking into those places and getting vaccinated, not relying on the on the registration platform. So these are some of the gaps. And the only way to bridge gap is to get closer to the realities at the shop floor. Okay, now, if, if we are talking about that now, currently, still in this uh, COVID-19 uh, vaccination where the 3.4 million, after going through the front, the health line, the, the health workers and those in the front line, after vaccinating those, it's just too insignificant for the population alone in Lagos State, let, uh, let alone we talk about Nigeria, for persons to get vaccinated apart from the frontline health workers. Uh, with regards to that, when do you think the country should be preparing to, uh, to accept the next batch of COVID-19 vaccines so that we can be moving towards uh, vaccinating more than 40% of the populace, at least for the moment in time? Uh, we, we, we need to uh, exercise some patience. I don't. I don't think uh, the vaccination has got much uh, available for now. I'm also saying that is that I, I read in the papers that the the Serum Institute in India has halted the shipping thing to some part of the world. And why are they doing that? Because the Europeans, who are the owners of uh, AstraZeneca, for example, are saying, look. Before you ship to all those uh, Nigeria and the rest of all, of course they didn't mention Nigeria. Um, let us be sure that we have enough here already. So they are going to have some basic control uh, over it to be sure that they do they deal with their own people first before allowing people like us to get into it. Since we cannot do uh, our own research and we uh, uh, we are not contributing to that space, so we just need to continue to uh, discuss with them to ensure that this so-called vaccine equity will still play out and make us to be able to receive the next set of batches upon batches until we're able to do 40% that we targeted for this year. Okay, Mr. Lodger, before I leave this particular topic, let me uh, quickly deviate a little to the global arena. Do remember that the European Union also and uh, the United Kingdom is having a loggerhead concerning the vaccine. The, the vaccine. And uh, the European Union is somewhat seen trying to, to boycott, not to send a vaccine to the UK. And this has set the two countries, the European Union and the UK, at loggerheads with regards to COVID-19 vaccine. They, too, on um, that global scene and the Europe are uh, passing through this vaccine fight. The, where do you think Africa stands when, uh, when they say the, the two giants fight, the grass suffers? So where do you think Africa, the continent of Africa, stands in regards to vaccinating the populace? I think Africa, it, it, look, look at Nigeria, for example. I'm going to use Nigeria. There are two vaccines that are currently uh, so, um, uh, to, to undergo um, the test. You, you have to conduct at a level uh, of a test. Can we fast-track this test? 
and have an African solution on the table as well. There's a huge politics around vaccine, and it is important that we know this. I am sure, though, that the people at the level of our NCDC, they know that what is vaccine politics. And the truth is, if they don't have enough vaccines in, 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 in the UK or, or in Europe, they're not going to ship to you. You are a secondary consideration. Not because they think they want you to die, but because, number one, they have to take care of their own people first, and number two, it is more severe with them than it is with us. So they will take care of the people first. So if we can fast-track the clinical testing of, of the Nigerian options or any other option that is available from, from other parts of Africa, we may be able to proceed faster with our own solution rather than waiting endlessly for when the, uh, 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 the one from Oibo land will come. Right. Uh, now, let's move away from that topic. Presently now, the April 6th was supposed to be the deadline where uh, Nigerians have been expected or have been told to link their NIN numbers with their SIM, num with their SIM cards. And, uh, but a lawyer has taken the federal government to court and secured a positive verdict where the court has extended it for two months, even though the lawyer requested for one year. What's your take on that story? I think the court decision is already news. Uh, the reason I said that is that Ubani went to court in December. I said when he went to court, the deadline was two weeks. Everything was meant to be closed out by the end of December. You know, and he went to court and said, you cannot do this to guys. You have to extend it. In fact, he requested for a one-year extension. Then he put a clause there that all as, as for as long as the court may determine. So uh, the court has now determined two weeks, uh, two months uh, extension. But before this judgment was given, NIN itself has extended from that end of December till April 6th, which is three, three months plus. That, that, that is why I said this judgment in itself appears to be mute, because the authorities have already extended uh, uh, that come. And uh, they can, we can also extend it further if there is need for that. I, I don't see any reason why you want to box everybody to a corner to get NIN within a, a particular uh, 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 framework. After all, children are being born every day. You know. But I also understand the fact that Nigerians will not do it if there is no element of compulsion that forces them within a particular framework, frame, uh, the time frame to do it. Now, let's uh, still on this NIN. The bank verification number, the BVN, started a very long time ago. I believe it was during the previous administration, before the current administration came into power. And as we speak, the BVN registration is still on in several banks. Why the rush when it comes to the NIN? The NIN is a much bigger project than the BVN. BVN has to do with bank accounts. As we speak today, there are no more than 50 million bank accounts in Nigeria. And out of the 50 million, there are some of us who have uh, three or four. So effectively, maybe it is even, let's even say 50 million. That is different from an NIN, which everybody is meant to have. That is a target of 200 million Nigerians. So... I may not have a bank account, I may not desire to have a bank account, so I may never have a BVN, but I still have to be accounted for as a citizen of Nigeria. The only way to be accounted for as a citizen of Nigeria is NIN, not BVN. So we should have even done NIN before we do BVN. Maybe we will never even have required to do BVN if we have been serious with our NIN. Okay, now... What, what about the argument uh, that is coming uh, still with regards to NIN, but has to do with the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board, JAM, where students, uh, it has been said that students must have their NIN numbers in line with their SIM card numbers, or they must have an NIN present if they are to write their JAM examination. Don't you think this is going to uh, hinder a lot of students to writing their examination, given the fact that it it's more like a very, very daunting task to get to your NIN in the first place, and the exam is the exam is meant to be somewhere around June. You know, we, 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 have, been, we have been at this junction before, where Jam said the same thing, that look, unless you have your NIN, there is no way 
uh, they won't allow you to register and all that. But at the end of the day, we have to cancel it after, after we have realized the futility because a whole lot of those children, uh, kids were still not able to get the NIA and do the register. Now we are back to that same junction. And if we're not careful, the same problem will apply. So, number one, we need to have a campaign that is focused on everybody needs to be aware that they must have this number. Number two, we need to make it easy for people to have the number. There was a time when they, everybody had to go to NIN office before we now realize that, oh, it's possible for all these uh, the, the telcos to help us out. Now, we're using the telcos now. But it is still not smooth enough. So we must be able to continue to make it easier. If we cannot achieve making it easy for people to do it, then we must not make it mandatory that these kids must have it before they can do jam. Now, let's leave that discussion um, and focus on another very critical discussion. Lately, as a result of the level of insecurity in the country, it has led to loggerheads among ethnic nationalities in the country to the extent that some other persons or an ethnic tribe is alleged to be calling for a secession, for secession to, to leave the federating Nigeria, to leave the federation. That uh, is a case in the front burner of the polity, even though within the Yoruba uh, nation, there's been, uh, people do not take it seriously, but it's something to be considered uh, in Nigeria. What's your take on it? Um, I, 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 suspicion, uh, it, it, it has become an everyday affair now. And, and it is the, because there is a gap somewhere. When people are saying, I want to leave, it does not necessarily mean that they want to leave. It could also mean that they are sending another message that, look, I am not happy in this union. Can we come together and talk about how to make this union better and comfortable for all the parties within the union? And when they're not getting your responses, then they begin to agitate to leave. So it behoves on us as a nation. How many, how many ethnic nationalities are in Nigeria? In Kaduna alone, there are six, over 60. Are we going to break Kaduna State into 60 countries? Are we going to break Cross River into how many, like 40 or more than that ethnic all right. Uh, thank you very much for joining us this morning, Balao Olojade. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having You're very much welcome. Well, that's how far we can go this morning on the newspaper review. Many thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, you can join us again at 3 p.m. on News Around the Globe and 9 p.m. on Primetime News Around the Globe right here on High Impact Television. I'm Oyin Priye Kromale. Do have a fantastic weekend.